Welcome to this week's Servants Entrance Prayer Service. Please join us in our opening song. Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Abundance frightens us. Too few is a thing we understand. Competition for limited resources we see as a given, a law of nature, or at least human nature. But a God who blesses abundantly, that's harder to comprehend. Yet look out the window. Billions and billions of snowflakes turning a bare, frozen world into a dazzling, shimmering one, singing out praise to the Creator. Billions of stars shining in the nighttime sky, illuminating what would otherwise be beyond our sight. Billions of seeds that fell off the honey locust tree in the fall now gathered by hungry squirrels in winter. Abundance. It is here for us, too, if only we have eyes to see. Let us pray that God will watch over us and protect us. Father, watch over your family and keep us safe in your care, for all our hope is in you. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the book of Isaiah. In the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw God seated on a high and lofty throne, wearing a garment with a train which filled the temple. Seraphim were stationed above, each of them had six wings. With two they veiled their faces, with two they veiled their feet, and with two they hovered aloft. Holy, holy, holy is the God of hosts, they cried one to the other. All the earth is filled with God's glory. At the sound of that cry, the frame of the door shook, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, I am doomed, for I am a person of unclean lips, living among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the ruler, the God of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, holding an ember, which it had taken with tongs from the altar. The seraph touched my mouth with the ember. See, it said, now that this has touched your lips, your wickedness is removed, your sin purged. Then I heard the voice of God saying, Whom will I send? Who will go for us? Here I am, I said. Send me. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. A proclamation of Psalm 40. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Sisters and brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and in which you stand firm. You are being saved at this very moment if you hold fast to it as I preached it to you. Otherwise you have believed in vain. I handed on to you first of all what I myself received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried and in accordance with the scriptures, rose on the third day, that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by more than 500 sisters and brothers at once, most of whom are still alive, although some have fallen asleep. Next, he was seen by James, then by all the apostles. Last of all, he was seen by me as one yanked from the womb. I am the least of the apostles. In fact, because I persecuted the church of God, I do not even deserve the name. But by God's favor, I am what I am. This favor that God has given to me has not proved fruitless. Indeed, I have worked harder than all the others, not on my own, but through the grace of God. In any case, whether it be I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. The Word of God. Thanks be to God.
Please rise in body or spirit for the gospel. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus stood by Lake Genesaret, the crowd pressed in on him to hear the word of God. He saw two boats moored by the side of the lake. The fishers had disembarked and were washing their nets. Jesus got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to pull out a short distance from the shore. Then, remaining seated, he continued to teach the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, pull out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Rabbi, we have been hard at it all night long and have caught nothing, but if you say so, I will lower the nets. Upon doing this, they caught such a great number of fish that their nets were at the breaking point. They signaled to their mates in the other boat to come and help them. These came, and together they filled the two boats until they nearly sank. But when Simon saw what happened, he was filled with awe and fell down before Jesus, saying, Leave me, I beg you, for I am a sinner. For Simon and his shipmates were astonished, as were James and John, Zebedee's offspring, who were Simon's partners. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. And when they brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed Jesus. The good news of salva salvation. Glory and praise to our Savior, Jesus Christ. Here I am, Lord. Think about a classroom of enthusiastic first graders sitting in circle time as, they, as their teacher asks for a volunteer to deliver something to the classroom next door. Do you see 20 hands shoot up, children on their knees, arms outstretched with that look in their eyes? Pick me, pick me, here I am, see me. That is not what I imagine Isaiah was envisioning when he wrote the first reading. A better example might be Confirmation Practice 1990-something, and Sister Mary Ann Dixon has just instructed the tentative, somewhat awkward, too cool for school, on the verge of adulthood 14-year-olds to stand and sing the hymn, Here I Am. They are reminded that they will be receiving this sacrament of initiation and would be viewed as adults now in the Catholic Church. Some of the teens smirk and roll their eyes, some giggle, some look bored, but they all shyly stood and started to sing, quietly at first. But when they started to sing, the chorus, there was a change. All those years of gentle instruction and participation in church activities was beginning to take hold and make sense. 
they, although unsure or less competent in their role the church was playing in their lives at the time, was something that they heard and they began to sing in loud voices. Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I think they had had enough experience with the community of St. John Fisher to know what that meant. And they would answer God's call, even though they were unsure, just like the fishermen that had just finished a long night in their boats when Jesus asked them to drop their nets. For me, that was a transformative moment. I saw what the message was. You can be reluctant and unsure and still hear the call and act. I am not worthy, but I will trust the master. It was a year later when Sister Mary Ann Dixon asked Ken and I to take over the youth group. My turn to be that 14 year old rolling my eyes and thinking, I can't do this, I am not worthy. I had to stop and rethink what was being asked of me. It was time to listen to what God was asking, get uncomfortable, step outside of my box, listen to the angel. You played it safe and met your obligation. It is time now for you to take a risk. The result was immense personal growth and the added richness and grace I received was beyond measure. I never would have had this experience, nor would have I would I have had the courage to make other life-changing decisions had I not answered that call. What started as an obligation was in fact a life-altering moment. I am not worthy. Trust the master. Here we are at the beginning of Black History Month. It is important to look for other examples of those that would hear the call and answer, here I am. Was it as simple for someone like Elizabeth Lang, born in Haiti in the late 1700s, to believe to be from a family of means? She and her family fled to Cuba during the Haitian Revolution and then came to the U.S. along with many other immigrants from the West Indies. She was a well-educated woman of color, and by 1813, Elizabeth Lang was living in Baltimore. Elizabeth was said to be courageous, loving, and a deeply spiritual woman. She was known as a strong, independent thinker and doer. Elizabeth recognized that the children of her fellow Caribbean immigrants needed education. She responded to that need in spite of being a black woman in a slave state long before the Emancipation Proclamation. Elizabeth used her own money and home to educate children of color. Early in 1828, Elizabeth Lang was encouraged to start a school by Father James Jobert. She also started the first congregation of women of African heritage. Elizabeth became the founder and the first superior of the Oblate Sisters of Providence and was then known as Mother Mary. The mission was to educate the poor immigrant black population, but she also served as a nurse during the cholera epidemic. After Father Jobert's death, she was forced to live in poverty, suffering racial injustice. There was a sense of abandonment, yet through it all, Mother Mary never lost faith. I think this is the embodiment of the second reading. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. This favor that God has given to me has not proved fruitless. Mother Mary certainly had toiled harder than all of them, but recognized that it was God's grace that was in her and working through her. We need to take a moment to recognize the willingness of a free black woman working tirelessly in a slave state, enduring hardships and discrimination daily to answer God's call and say, here I am, Lord. Which brings us to our gospel reading. After working all day fishing with nothing to show for it, they are done for the day washing nets and Jesus says, let's take the boat out. Let me preach a bit. And after that was done, Jesus instructs Peter, go out a little further and drop your nets. Simon says, master, come on, we've worked hard all night and have nothing. But because you say so, I will lower the nets. Trust. Their yield of fish is so great 
but they have to call more boats over to help retrieve it. Simon Peter says, I am not worthy of your grace. Jesus replies, don't be afraid. From now on, we will be catching men. And just like that, these lifetime fishermen saw what the Lord had offered them, and they left their lives and livelihood to follow him. Trust the master. I reflect on this as we are called to engage in synodal preparation. I'm inspired when I read the purpose of the Synod of Bishops, a spiritual process that requires listening to the Holy Spirit as well as to each other. I am hopeful when I read that Sister Nathalie Bequart, one of two undersecretaries of the Synod and a woman, will have the right to vote at the Synod of Bishops. This is portrayed as historic, and although Sister Bequart may be the first and only woman to have a vote in affecting the vision of the Catholic Church for the future, I personally find this incredibly disappointing. It is 2022, correct? The Synodal Preparatory Document reads, the purpose of the Synod is not to produce more documents. Rather, it is intended to inspire people to dream about the church, how we are called to be, to make people's hopes flourish, to stimulate trust, to bind up wounds, to weave new and deeper relationships, to learn from one another, to build bridges, to enlighten minds, to warm hearts, and restore strength to our hands for our common mission. The predatory document continues. Marion Williams, a canon lawyer and synod of bishops consultor, told reporters that women need to present themselves and speak courageously during this consultation phase. So I invite us all to dream, hope, learn, and trust. But in order to realize our vision of an inclusive, just Catholic Church, we must engage in the dialogue. I am not worthy. Trust the Master. Let us take our friendly time. Inspire all those who lead and serve in this church. May they know your guidance and direction. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear your prayer. Help us to be understanding and forgiving to all those we encounter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear your prayer. Show us how to serve one another, to offer love, care, and support. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear your prayer. Guide all, guide all those who are called to lead and advocate in the world. May they carry love with them always. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear your prayer. Now let's offer our own intentions and prayers.
Let us pray. Most loving God, we thank you for our calling and for nurturing in each of us a disciple's heart, a heart that rejoices in your promptings, a heart sustained by your spirit, and a heart encouraged by the support and love of our brothers and sisters. God, you offer us new beginnings. Fill us with confidence in our work and may our efforts extend beyond the threshold of our homes, out through the servant's entrance to a world so desperately in need of hope and healing. Dream your dream in us. That is this house church, your vision and direction will take shape in us and we will be transformed by your spirit. May your presence in what we do encourage us to dare and may solidarity and togetherness be our strength. We make this prayer in your name with Jesus the Christ and your Holy Spirit, amen. That concludes this week's Servants Entrance Prayer Service. Please join us in our closing song. Mm -hmm.